PC Party leader Tim Hudak says his million jobs plan is the way to reinvigorate Ontario's sluggish economy. But is he right? Joining us now for their views, Marie Botriani. She is the former Ontario Liberal Cabinet Minister. John Capabianco, longtime progressive conservative stalwart. Andrew Cash, New Democrat MP for the riding of Davenport. Michael Luba, Green Party campaigner and contributor to the True North Times. And Ashley Chinati, reporter with QP Briefing. And we're very happy to have everybody around our table today. Let's just go around. John, I'm saving you for the end. Okay. We just heard 20 minutes from Tim Hudak, so I'm saving you for the end. Bullet points. Uh, up, down, what do we think? Million jobs plan. Oh, well, I have a couple of questions. Sure. One is, uh, how is he, how is Mr. Hudak going to reach that target by starting out by cutting 100,000 public sector jobs? Uh, my other question is, uh, how is he going to reach that target by cutting jobs in the education system, and including educational assistance that help our most vulnerable children? And the third is, how is he going to rip up those contracts with the green energy companies and the billions that that'll cost? So those are my three questions for Mr. Hudak. We will go from there. Andrew Cash. Well, I think Linwood Barkley uh, summed it up nicely when he said, uh, um, I need your vote so I can fire you. That sums up the, uh, essentially what's happening. It's, uh, it, the numbers don't make sense. I mean, he, he's talking about a million jobs, but he starts off with cutting 100,000. So, so is he going to create 900,000, or is he going to create 100 or 1.1 million? We, we don't really know. But it, it does seem like, uh, you know, Mr. Mr. Hudak is, uh, is, he needs to keep his job. He needs to, he needs to, to do whatever it takes to, to keep his job. I think it's a, it's a bit of a desperate uh, move. Michael Luba. Well, I'm going to agree with Andrew here, but I'm going to go even a step further and say I get to page six of this job plan, and I see that Tim Hudak says there are 800,000 unemployed in Ontarians. Well, I'm a young man, and I know how to use a computer, so I go to StatsCan, and I see that that number is actually 555,000. Seems to me like perhaps the whole platform is built on a bit of a fallacy there when you're trying to make a million jobs for only 555,000 unemployed Ontarians. Um, it seems like he's reaching, and I'm not really sure why. Ashley, as a reporter, I don't expect you to weigh in with an opinion on the thing, but where do you want to go with this? I think it's a, it's a very bold plan, and, and Mr. Hudak has been saying for a long time now that that's what he's pursuing, so he's accomplished that. I think that critics will say it could be a million jobs through a million cuts. There's a lot of, a lot of slashing proposed in here, and it, I think it depends on what Ontario voters want to see um, as far as the economic direction of the province, whether they buy into a school of thought that you can cut taxes and, and, and potentially cut services to grow the economy, or if they want to see the kind of government investment that has been promised uh, by the Liberals, or perhaps some middle ground from the, from the NDP. John, you've been listening to the criticism. What do you say? Well, and, and, and so I'm getting used to all the criticism. So is Tim. But I think the key thing, though, Steve, is that uh, he has a plan. It is bold. It, it is something that he sees Ontario needs uh, with respect to jobs. He's been tapping, that in, tapping into that for the last little while. Uh, and, and quite frankly, everyone's talking about the fact that people do need jobs. So it is a plan. It is bold. Uh, he is going to uh, he's going to make it happen, and I think today we saw the launch that uh, that he did uh, with uh, unveiling the plan, and it was and it was a really good launch with a lot of very solid policies within that platform. What made it a good launch in your view? Well, a couple of things. One is that he actually had a plan. He actually had s specific ideas to get to the one million jobs that he's talking about. Uh, secondly, he he personalized a lot of it. There was a lot of. Uh, stories where he talked about his parents, you know, being son of immigrants and coming to Can coming to Ontario and, and just building uh, a life for his family. That was important. I think that is what he's going to be, tr I think, translating in over the next uh, 30 plus days in this campaign. But it's going to be about jobs, and that I think is going to be the ballot question. Andrew Cash, I should follow up with you on that because you are a guy who knows a thing or two about performance, having been a musician for a long time. Hudak was very poised today. It was a very polished performance. He didn't read it off a teleprompter. He spoke it mm -hmm. to a crowd of people, uh, most of whom I suspect he didn't know. It was a good performance. Mm -hmm. Performance counts in politics, right? So how far did that go today? Well, you know, you're talking about a leader who, who uh, tried to make an announcement uh, on transit and got kicked off the TTC. Now, I've been riding transit since uh, my parents let me out of the house, and I don't think I've ever been kicked off the TTC. I mean, you know... Did you bring the, 10 media crews <laughs> with you? I mean, that might add Well, I mean, I think that, that most people would know you, you need to actually ask the TTC, and I think that underscores a certain element of, of, uh, of, of just a flailing about that, that uh, the Conservative campaign is uh, in, 
is in right now. Okay, well, you're, can, I, can I just say that? Sure. Just, just on that, and I think, it, it, and again, it's typical of the NDP to sort of focus on sort of, you know, him being kicked off the TTC as opposed to the GTA plan that he's actually put in place. I think what's more shocking, Andrew, quite frankly, is that um, of all the leaders, Andrea was the one who actually knew that the government was going to be defeated before anybody else did. And she's come out of the gates, I think, quite slow, quite sluggish, hasn't come up with any ideas, notwithstanding well, maybe the HST off of, off of the hydro rates. But where has Andrea been? And it's been a, 10 days of campaigning. And I think, you know, instead of focusing on whether or not Tim was kicked off the TTC, focus on the fact that he's come up with a pretty solid GTA transit plan that is being, that is being talked about. Well, Let's go here for a response well, and then well, Ashley. The question was, uh, does performance matter? And of course it does. And and, and I think that his performance has been pretty poor off the off the starting gate. And uh, with respect to uh, Andrea, I mean, you know, you just look at the uh, the plan for transit. I mean, they're talking about um, a, uh, a reduction in the uh, a rollback in the in the corporate taxes uh, and putting that money into transit. That is a solid plan for transit, and uh, none of the other parties have actually come up with it. Sorry, that. just to confirm, she's talking about a rollback in the corporate tax cuts that have right. been offered, That's raising right. corporate taxes to pay for transit improvements. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. Ashley, you wanted to add. I think that Tim did have a very strong performance today. I, I think he looked relaxed. I think he looked approachable. I think he made some, some very tough policies to sell seem like common sense. Um, so I think that, that he definitely did his job today. I think what we've seen with some of these recent gaffes about him appearing at uh, factories that received corporate welfare to slam corporate welfare or the, or the, uh, uh, the TTC event was, was his planning team not doing their job. But I think uh, Tim has rolled well with those punches and he has been performing very well this campaign, especially in comparison to his 2011 performance. There's no question, I should say there's no question, most of the people I listen to and read and speak to say, Marie, that he has set the agenda for the campaign so far. Would you agree with that? He may have set the agenda, but I agree with Andrew. It didn't have a good start for him. Perhaps today we'll turn that around. We'll see. I want to go back to what uh, John said earlier mm -hmm. about uh, his personalization, which is always good for a politician to do. But I, too, am the daughter of immigrants. and. I saw with interest that he wants to cut the tax credit for seniors renovating their home if they have a disability. Mm -hmm. So I have an 83-year-old mom that came in the 50s and worked hard, and uh, so I, and I think a lot of people have parents that are in the same boat. And once they drill down and see the details of the plan, there's a lot to criticize. Sure, but his position is, I'm not the guy who's going to give you stuff. I'm the guy who's going to tell it to you straight. Yes, but our parents gave a lot for 60 years, and now it's their turn to get something back. And I think we're obligated to make sure that our seniors are well taken care of. So I guess philosophically, Kathleen Wynne differs from Mr. Hudak on that. Michael. Well, Steve, you say Tim Hudak wants to give it to us straight, right? But then at the same time, he's introducing job numbers that just don't make sense. So on one hand, he's telling you you're fired, right? Tough decision, but we've got to make it. On the other hand, he's saying, we're going to have a million billion jobs, right, for... I think it's just a million. Yeah. <laughs> Not a million billion. <laughs> for, for half the number of people who actually need them, right? And so, I, you know, we want the news that we need to hear, but at the same time, we want it to make sense, and we want it to make sense in context. And that's, that's the, the problem I see with Hudak's plan. John, let's follow up on this 100,000, because it has captured a lot of attention mm -hmm. since uh, Mr. Hudak mentioned it in Barrie, I think, on his campaign stop the other day. If you're all about, as he has said, creating new jobs, and then he says, oh, and by the way, I'm going to have to eliminate 100,000 jobs from the broader public service while I'm at it, but I'm not touching health and I'm not touching police, which basically means one out of every other six jobs are on the firing line. Is that inconsistent? It's not. And where I think Tim's going with this is that in order to create the million, do million jobs, um, you've got to be able to do and make some tough decisions. And one of the things that he sees as an impediment to the million, do million jobs is the, the, the bargaining of public, the broader public service. And what Tim is saying is he's saying, let's cut to 100,000, which is basically back to the 2009 levels. So because, because since the Liberals have been in power, the increase in the broader public service has gone through the roof. So well, what Tim 300, is saying, 300, 300, So what Tim is saying is, let's bring it back to the 2009 levels where it was a million. Mm 
And then actually, let's try to do that through outsourcing and through better management of those services and not cut where, it, where it's supposed to be cut. We're not cut the major services being education and healthcare. That's what he's saying. And that's in order to do that, you'll get to the million jobs that he's talking about. Let's but do he, the but follow he is talking about cutting in, in education. I mean, there's no, there's no uh, doubt about that. So I'm not sure where you're getting that there's no, going to be no cuts in, in, in education. saying that it's not in healthcare, not in education. Well, no, well, well actually, no, he did. He, he's, Sorry, yeah. no, I'm just going yeah. to clarify. He has accepted the Drummond recommendation, which is 9,700 education workers, mm -hmm. not necessarily teachers, but people who work outside the classroom in the education system. Does that bring education standards down? I don't know. That's for debate, well, I, I guess. I, I guess as a former chief psychologist of a school board, I am concerned about the educational assistance. Absolutely. And that he said in a speech a few, a few months ago. This, this isn't something that's conjured up by... by by us. Mm -hmm. It's uh, something he said. And they are not highly paid to begin with. Those are jobs. Those are important jobs. And I am concerned about the young children. And they're the most vulnerable in our province that will suffer as a result. Andrew? Absolutely. I, 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 I think you know, we're, we're looking at uh, classroom sizes increasing and, uh, and the, um, the loss of some of these uh, assistants. And uh, you know, I've got kids in, that, in the elementary system. And I can tell you that. Uh, uh, teachers do an awesome job, and uh, they need the support. And uh, I, I think that you know, fundamentally, uh, th this, this is just something that uh, most Ontarians will will feel is not on. Actually, you've got the list there, okay. right? That's the basically the one-page budget plan that Tim mm -hmm. Hudak put out today. Yeah. Seven of those cuts are direct recommendations from Don Drummond, they who are. the Liberal Party hired to find cuts. Mm -hmm. You, I mean, feel yeah. free to read a few of them out if you want. Well, uh, cutting a modest increase to class sizes, uh, having gone through the education system when they were slightly bigger than they are now, I'm not sure that's the end of the world. Um, adjusting staffing levels for full-day kindergarten. Um, the, the merging Ontario Works in the Ontario Disability Supports Program. That was not actually a Drummond recommendation. That was a, a Shake Lankin recommendation, but another government commissioned report uh, recommending that change. Freezing the Ontario Child Benefit, which the Liberals wanted to index. Uh, there were a number of other initiatives, uh, just general, broader public service efficiencies that he plans to adopt from Drummond as well. Um, well, going from 27 ministries to 16, I think he thinks yeah. going to save some money. Ex and I believe that he would. I mean, do, do we need 27 different ministries? I mean, there are some of these that were at one time one ministry, just even since I've been at Queen's Park for the last few years, and are now split into two. So maybe there is some efficiency there. Even the 9,700 education workers was directly from the Drummond report. I should ask Mary Boutriano, who's been a cabinet minister, um, one of the 27 once upon a time. Is there room for efficiency in creating fewer ministries? I'm not going to disagree with that. I don't see how many jobs he would create as a result of that, or, or exactly how much efficiency. I think that would be more symbolic than anything else. As an educator now at the university level, I am concerned about Mr. Hudak's uh, plan to roll back the 30% tuition uh, reduction for uh, lower uh, income students. That I am very concerned about because, again, we know that if you really want a good jobs program, you have to invest in education. You have to invest in training. I'm suppose, I suppose I'm biased, given my present uh, occupation, but I think the research bears that out as well. John, I need you to speak to that because, of course, grade, I was about to say grade 13. It's not grade 13 <laughs> anyway. OAC doesn't get you too far in the job market anymore. Uh, this government, for better or for worse, has made decisions about how much it wants to help lower income people pay for their university tuition. Tim Hudak today said, sorry, not going to do that anymore. Is that a mistake? It's not a mistake. And I think, again, Steve, it starts, you, you have to have this. If you want to get the budget balanced, if you want to get sort of the province back on track, these are tough decisions that have to be made. And I think Tim's been in government and in, in, in opposition, but has been around Queen's Park enough to know and has talked to enough people to understand what works and what doesn't work. This is yet another example of areas where you can cut, you can uh, uh, reduce and, and find efficiencies in order to bring back what he wants to do, which is get people back to work, which again is a, is a top priority. I have found the one thing that Andrew Cash is going to support. He wants to build a subway to your riding. <laughs> You've got to like that idea. Well, Steve, there's already three in my riding, so I, I mean, <laughs> if we can fit another few. I, I think that... Uh, um, you support the downtown relief line, so uh, to say. Of course, uh, it's the number one priority of, uh, of Andrea Horvath's uh, transit um, platform. Uh, number two being the electrification of the uh, of the Up Express, which has been a, a long, long-held demand by local residents in the in the community. So I'm I'm. 
thrilled that those are parts of uh, the NDP platform. Uh, I think that there's wide uh, consensus around the need for a, for a downtown relief line. So we have found the thing that you two agree on. Cash and Hudak together again on public transit. <laughs> That's well, the headline. Well, you know, Andrea announced uh, um, uh, also a, a plan to reduce the number of cabinet ministers and to she did. also to uh, institute a, an accountability and savings uh, ministry. And I think that that speaks to uh, the concerns of many Ontarians that that this, that uh, you know there are billions of dollars that have gone out the out the door. We need to reset the way we do transparency in Ontario, and and that's uh, the cornerstone of this part of, the, of her platform. And, and the transit issue, and and, and 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 I'm not surprised that Andrew supports it, because I, I think it is something that... Well, I support that... Andrea Horvath's transit plan. <laughs> well, Tim will get it done. Uh, and, and I think that Tim is obviously supporting Andrea's plan, because well, I don't know if I heard him talk about transit at all in the last couple of years in the, in the legislature, so clearly he's been listening to Andrea on that. Well, the, the, the thing I think that we have to realize is that transit has been being dealt with in, in some ways quite ham, ham fisted in, in, by the city and by, by, uh, by Toronto City Council. And you've seen the debates and you've seen the arguments back and forth. And now you've got a mayoral race that's happening in Toronto. And of course, all the candidates are talking about some form of transit and transit improvement. I think the fact that Tim was, was one of the first to come up and say, look, we need to sort of take that put it into the provincial jurisdiction and make sure that all of the stuff that happens at City Hall with all of the debates and the politicking and all that ends and we actually get some transit and get some transit strategy back into place. And I think that's why um, people are going to resonate or are going to listen to what, what he's saying on the tra transit file. Ashley? I do think it sounds good, the idea of having you know one level of government trying to talk about all of the, the GTHA transit. That's what Metrolinx is supposed to be doing right now in concert with the TTC. If we were to upload the TTC, there would be an issue of if you want to raise Toronto property taxes to pay for something on the TTC, does that become taxation without representation? Hmm. So I think there is a need for City Council to be in there unless the province wants to pay all that money. And, the, and, the, and for the Scarborough subway, for example, the city did raise property taxes for the billion plus tab that it's kicking in. Say that again. For the Scarborough <laughs> subway, the I city of Toronto to did raise taxes. Mayor Rob Ford raise wants taxes. to raise taxes to pay for a he Scarborough done subway. It. It's passed. It's, it's happening. done deal. Yeah. Just for all those who think yeah. Rob Ford cut your taxes, yeah. I just want people to know. Mm -hmm. He actually anyway. That's a different but, but show. Ashley's <laughs> point. Ashley's point is, is quite valid, though, in the yeah. sense that. Um, City, city uh, Hall always has to have some level of play, but if you've noticed those over the last little while, every time there was a major uh, announcement or some restructuring or infrastructure that had to be done in the city level, it all fell to the province and the feds. They mm -hmm. all sort of pointed fingers to say, well, we can only make this happen if Ontario gives us money mm -hmm. or if the feds give us money. So at the end of the day, they all go back to those two levels for the funding for these plans to sort of work out. Okay. Let me put an... I'm sorry. Let me just put, put another thing on the table here, which is, again, near, near the top okay. of that list... You will find that Tim Hudak will eliminate a two and a half billion dollar subsidy program, which was designed by the Liberal government to lure jobs here. Do you want to make the argument? Or I don't even know if you support it. I assume you support it, but do you want to make the argument why you think this government feels it needs to spend two and a half billion dollars to keep and/or attract new jobs in the province? Well, and I think it's a strategy that's received a lot of praise, actually. And uh, we also have uh, the, the Liberals also have on on their. Uh, platform, other uh, initiatives to create jobs, like the youth job strategy, which is very interesting for anyone that has youth in their family looking for work. Uh, so no, I'm, I'm in favor of, of that strategy. Are you in favor of that? Well, I, I think that uh, the plan that Andrew has put on the table around, uh, around uh, tax uh, incentives, tax credits for employers that actually invest in their, uh, in their infrastructure and who actually hire workers. I think it's a very sound, it's a, it's a simple idea and it, and it makes a lot of sense. It makes a lot of sense to Ontarians. She's taking a different approach. She, she actually will give tax breaks to companies that create jobs. That's right. This is a two and a half billion dollar fund that will subsidize the creation of jobs. I don't know how different these two mm -hmm. things are. Well, I think one is, uh, you know, you see employers actually uh, walk in the walk. Uh, we've seen too many employers in Ontario take subsidy money and then and then boot it out of the province and we, we've got to stop that trend. Michael. Well, I like the idea of, of moving the, the subsidies to the, the job creators that actually do create jobs because right now I see a lot of job creators that are actually just hoarding money. A lot of Bay Street companies that keep that money in their pockets and use it for whatever they will. When people on Main Street, the little guys, 
really need that money to create jobs, and they can really make a difference for, for average people out there on the street. So I think the whole focus of this program is in the wrong place. You're focusing on the big guys who've already got it, while the little guys who need it are left not, out. Not to mention the StatsCan report in 2012, which showed that there's about a half a trillion dollars in what, what is called dead money. Dead money. In, yeah. in, in sitting, sitting, there. sitting there, right, in cash. And uh, so, so, you know, I think for, for Andrea, the, the, the issue is, look, let's, let's, let's support these employers uh, to, uh, who are doing the work that needs to be done to create employment. Mm -hmm. Can I just confirm, this two and a half billion dollar fund that the Liberals talk about, it was in the budget. Mm -hmm. Budget didn't pass. Nope. So it doesn't exist? Doesn't exist. But if they win, presumably they're going to try again. Presumably they would bring in the exact same budget. That's what they, that's what they seem to be saying. Right. So I, presumably it would be there. But remember, Don Drummond told us that we were all told tax credits and direct subsidies that we were spending about $3 billion a year supporting companies. So what uh, Tim is proposing is to give that in the form of a corporate tax cut. Uh, what, what Andrea seems to be proposing is to give that in the form of a tax cut after the jobs are created. Tax credit. And, yeah, credit. Or tax credit. Mm -hmm. um, and then if you look at what the Liberals have been doing, they have had some instances where they've given a corporate subsidy and the, the company is then closed. Uh, Kellogg's in London is a very good example of that. But then you also have other companies like Open Text just received $120 million and the president was speaking at that announcement, held up letters from Rick Perry, uh, the Governor Perry of Texas, and Governor Chris Christie of New Jersey and said, look, they want me to go there. They're offering me maybe the same, if not better. In California, uh, high tech companies like Twitter pay no payroll taxes. So these are the, the environments that this government is competing in to keep our tech companies here. But I don't know if that's right. And there are economists who say the subsidies don't create jobs. John, John knows, so I'm going to ask yeah. him. Well, but it is, it is about creating a culture in Ontario where actually jobs stay in Ontario and don't leave Ontario. The, the, the Liberals had a bad track record with respect to so many manufacturing jobs who have lost. And now they've created a system where they pick winners and losers, right? How, how do you determine which firm, which company you give a, a billion dollars to, which ones you don't, based on the fact that there's no strategy, there's no culture. And I think what Tim is suggesting is incent the companies to stay. You're playing against some of the big states and some of the other jurisdictions around the world for jobs. And being able to give employers a 30% tax cut and having them stay and make this, make this the most attractive jurisdiction for companies, not only to come to Ontario, but to actually stay in Ontario, Steve, that's what I think we have to do. And the Liberals haven't had that luck, well, and they don't have the credibility on that. I, I would Marie? disagree with that. And we, um, the Liberals, did decrease corporate taxes, and, and I think Ontario is quite competitive now. I think to decrease them even more would be wrong. And the economists uh, that have supported that plan, one of them is from uh, an organization that is supported by the Tea Party and, and the Tea Party supporters so that, and, and other negative things I can say about that gentleman. So I would not put a lot of faith into those that endorse uh, Mr. Hudak's plan. Uh -huh. The other thing that I, sorry Steve, that sure. I'd like to just remind people of is, um, you know, the, the Liberals have been in since 2003, that's 11 years, and the worst recession since the Great Depression occurred during that time. And it wasn't just Ontario that was hit. That's not in a way of an excuse for any kind of inaction on any party's part, but it was a very challenging time, and since 2009, since the sort of the height of that recession, manufacturing jobs are coming back and other jobs are being created. Perhaps not as quickly as many of us would like, but they are being created. I just want to put the, the different options, though, John. Uh, uh, Try this out for a yeah. second. The NDP is talking about subsidies or, forgive me, tax credits to create jobs. The Liberals are talking about, excuse me, I'll look this way, the Liberals are talking about this subsidy fund, $2.5 billion to subsidize jobs. You're talking about, your party, Tim Hudak, is talking about offering corporate tax cuts to create those jobs. So three different approaches, good discussion to be had about what works. The Harper Conservatives and the McGinty Liberals tried the cutting of the corporate income tax rates over the last decade, and corporations sat on the money. They didn't create jobs. So why is the Conservative Party trying something that empirical evidence suggests didn't work the first time around? Well, it, it'll change, and I think with Tim Hudak as Premier, I think, Stephen, that, that there will be a lot of those kind of changes that will happen at the corporate <laughs> level. But I, I do believe the job one is to ensure that no, more, no other jobs leave. And I think it's under, to the, it's under the Liberals' watch that we've become a have-not province, and we've got to change that. We've got to be able to have Ontario back as the engine of this country, manufacturing-wise and also financially. And I think that's an important factor, and I think that's one of the, things why, that's one of the reasons why Tim is focusing on jobs and creating a million jobs. Well, you know, the, the, the corporate tax rate in Ontario, 
Ontario is the lowest in the region, including the states around the, the Great Lakes. Um, it hasn't worked. And, uh, and, you know, if we're going to be competitive, we need to create uh, the, the climate here. But, but it depends on, on what you feel like the climate should be. And if it's a well-educated uh, workforce with uh, uh, good schools and, and, and a properly functioning public health care system, these are all huge incentives and, in, and inducements for, for employers. And uh, we're looking at, we need to look at it in the macro sense. And uh, uh, quite frankly, you know, and this is another thing that Andrea has said, you know, corporations benefit from, for example, the, the, the reduction of gridlock and the, and the well-functioning and the expansion of public transit. Corporations benefit greatly for that, and, uh, and um, uh, her sense is that, it's, that corporations should play a part in that. Michael. So I hear you saying, John, you know, just cut the corporate taxes, it'll work. Um, and and I, mean, I guess I respect that, but it, it's easy to say and it's a lot harder to actually have it work uh, in practice. And so I hear over here from Ashley Triven an, an enticing proposal about, um, I think it was Twitter having low payroll taxes and that being very competitive. Why not bring that here to Ontario? Or that's something that the Green Party of Ontario actually wants to do, cut payroll taxes. Let small businesses do what they do best. Double job creation at no extra cost. I think, it seems it, pretty it, easy. just because the Greens came out with their <clears throat> yesterday. Uh, manifesto yesterday, in which I think they would double the employer health tax exemption. So small businesses don't start paying employer health tax on, geez, I forget the number now. What is it? Is the maybe first, it to a maybe it's, is it a million yeah. bucks? Because it's 500 million? right now. So for a million bucks of payroll. Yeah. Two, uh, two a million, yeah. that, two, That's a pretty big tax cut, don't you think? Yeah, no, that is a tax cut. I wonder cut. why they didn't take that approach. Well, but I think, you know, those are kind of ideas or ideas that we should be debating about. And, and then sort of what, what can we do to sort of incent not only the small and medium-sized businesses, but the large corporations to stay. And I think that, that there's a, those are ideas that we should be talking about, yeah. Stephen, debating. That's, it's good to hear. <laughs> so that's an endorsement by the PCs yeah, of the Green exactly. No, I'm Absolutely. talking about the payroll tax cuts. And Just so check it. Actually, let me get you on this. Th this is... I mean, you saw this thing. This is an unabashedly small c conservative agenda that Tim Hudak advanced this afternoon. Um, I think I'm right in saying, but correct me if I'm wrong around the table, not even a symbolic bone tossed to the red Tory faction of the party. Wise? Well, I think he's, he's staked out his ground and he wants to stand on it. The, the NDP and the Liberals are fighting over the center, center left position now. And I think he's de made a conscious decision over the past two years through a series, of, I think a total of 15 policy papers, to go to the right. And I've had people on the Tory side of things say to me, we don't win elections by running to the center. As you can see with my Karis, we run elections by running to our core values. Unabashedly small C unabashedly. conservative. And I must say it's unabashedly small C conservative, but you also notice that there has been no mention or no gaps to do with social issues in this campaign. Mm -hmm. He wants to be a small government conservative. I don't think he wants to get involved in a lot of those old debates that have plagued previous uh, conservative campaigns. And I think that this speaks to a lot of people who are very angry right now. And I don't know if that's enough to, to win an election, but it could be enough to turn out his base, his vote in an election that could have a very low turnout. Let me ask John about that. What's the PC party base in Ontario today, do you think? What percentage of the electorate? Um, I, I would say probably the 30, 30%. Right, so you gotta find another <clears throat> eight, nine, 10% of the voters in order to win an election? It, you know, it's suggested that if you tossed a bone to the red Tories who are tending to stay home because they don't like Tim Hudak or the small c nature of his conservatism. If you tossed him a bone, you could get them to get off their couches and come out and vote for you. He has not done that. No, but I, I think this bad plan, move? though, no, it's not a bad move, though, Steve. I think this plan does speak to uh, all, all conservatives. In fact, it speaks to all Ontarians. I think what's, what Tim's been able to sort of read or at least realize is that it is about the economy. This is about jobs. It is about creating jobs and getting Ontario back in the shape that it should be in, cutting the debt in two years and getting employers incentivized to, to, to hire more people. So I think if you're a red Tory or, or if you're a, a small C conservative, um, you're going to like this plan because it speaks to what you want to do, which is, you know, I'm tired of seeing my neighbors or my neighbor's neighbors out of work or, or laid off or, or, you know, their job being cut considerably. So that appeals to anybody who's red or left or, or in the center. So I 
think from a conservative base perspective, he's got that already. It, it appeals to the red Tories for sure, I think, because they want to be able to know that there's somebody who's going to lead and take this province and get rid of the liberal scandal plagued and, and just indecisiveness that's okay. been going Let on. Let me pick up on that because we've got a few minutes left here. Hazel McCallion, the mayor of Mississauga, held a news conference today with Kathleen Wynne in which she basically endorsed her, said, I want you as a, to have a, a liberal majority government and you're my premier. When asked about the gas plant business, Hazel McCallion said, it's water under the bridge, we got to move on. You think most Ontarians think the loss of a billion dollars to pay for this scandal is water under the bridge? I think we'll find out on election day. And we I sure think will. that is the question. How much does the public want to punish this liberal premier for mistakes of the previous, gov previous government or the previous premier? And that is a good question. So actually, there is anger out there. Mm -hmm. However, this is why we have election campaigns and we can compare the, uh, the platforms. I just want to come back, if I may, to the, the small C platform, mm -hmm. conservative par platform. At least it didn't go as far as the last election campaign where Mr. Hudak had a very small C conservative platform so he's issue. Not talking chain gangs and, and he's foreign not talking about foreign workers this time. About foreign workers this time. Right. So there's an improvement there. Yeah. But I know I have a lot of friends that are red Tories, and I don't think they're going to like all of that plan. I don't think they're going to like the cut to the tuition for low income families because they, they, they see the importance of education of all the public. Mm -hmm. I don't think they'll like the cut to our parents being able to put ramps in their new homes and getting a tax credit for it. Mm -hmm. So I well. think I think it's quite, I think there, there are a couple questions. One, how, how will the gas plant issue play out? Fair enough, that's a, that's a good question. But the other will be, how will that 8% that go either way, depending on the yeah. issues, vote? Anyway. Well, I'm, I think that uh, Ontarians are very upset about the waste of, it, of, of a billion dollars, for political reasons, really, uh, on top of, uh, of the manifest incompetence around uh, the managing of, of the orange file and e-health. I think these things are, are, are absolutely at play in this election, but I think that it plays into the fact that, you know, people are feeling left out. People, our families are feeling squeezed. I mean, you know, I, I knock on doors in my riding, people are wondering what happened to their 15% cut in auto insurance. It didn't happen. And I think that uh, um, the, the Conservatives are, are, are battling the NDP, actually, in southwestern Ontario, not the Liberals. And I think that uh, um, if you've, you, you've got a scandal-plagued, uh, incompetent, uh, government on the one side Get off the and, fence. And, 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 <laughs> and a, and a, uh, and a leader in Tim Hudak who's making up numbers, uh, then I think that, you know, for a lot of Ontarians, they're going to look at, you know, the sort of sensible, uh, uh, reasoned arguments and proposals of Andrea and say, you know, she makes sense. She feels like a premier in waiting here. Last minute. Michael? I can sort of agree with what you're saying, Andrew, wow. but one point. Uh, <laughs> I'll return to that in a second. I definitely get that Ontarians are angry. I can see that, I can feel that, but I don't really know where they're directing their anger and I don't really know what their outlet is. Because right now they've got Tim Hudak and to use a bit of a hockey metaphor, I see him missing an open netter right now. He's got the puck, all he's gotta do is put it in the net, but instead he's over on the boards, he's telling people they're fired, right? That's not how you win an election. And Andrea Horvath, you have a woman, I don't even know what the NDP platform on jobs was until earlier today. Well, stay tuned. Right? Uh, last 30 seconds to <laughs> John Canadians Cuffin. always go to game seven, Michael, so hang in there. <laughs> um, but it, it, the, the gas plant is, is not water under the bridge. It is a serious issue. I think it's it, it, on a number of fronts. It's also how the Liberals handled it. Uh, but it speaks to a narrative, and it speaks to a narrative of can you trust Wynne and McGinty uh, and, and what they've done over the last 11 years to continue to do what they what needs to be done in this province, which is to get us back out of trouble. Tim Hudak's the only one that can do that, and that's why I think that's an important issue. And we thank all five of you for coming in today and helping us out with this one. And actually, one little thing we do want to say as well. You're the dean now, aren't you? That's right. Yeah, last time you were here, you were the... Interim dean. Interim dean. <laughs> now you are the dean of the Chang School at Ryerson University. So good, good job, Marie. Thank you. Thanks, everybody, very much. Thanks. Support Ontario's public television. Donate at TVO.org.